After a few weeks of tolerance, you notified the class rep on the state of the hallway closet doors that the lock jammed every so often. Ida had noticed a fair bit of usage with the closet and decided to investigate the state of the lock further, as he felt it was his duty to keep the upkeep of school property. He invited you along so that you could demonstrate the problem, of which you were happy to. You felt some form of frustration every time you wanted to grab something from the closet and thought that Ida would be able to provide the solution to the problem. While the two of you inspected the doors, you having left them open so that they wouldn't lock on themselves, you demonstrated how the mechanism looked like it was tampered with. You admitted that you weren't a locksmith of any sort, but knew a lock wouldn't be stuck on its own. Ida took a closer look and finalised that everyone should grab their belongings until a repair was arranged. You agreed and began to search for your items to start off with until you felt yourself being pushed into the closet alongside Ida. Then the doors shut. In the dark, the two of you turned to the doors, banging against its wooden frame and shouting, calling out to whoever was outside. But alas, there was no response leaving you in a cramped closet with one of the tallest boys in class. You sighed, leaning your head against the door. Oh, I don't need this on a Sunday morning, you mumbled under your breath. This is uncalled for, exclaimed Ida. I'll give Midoriya a call and get him to let us out. The light of his phone illuminated the closet's tight space, as well as his glasses as he scrolled through it to locate Midoriya's number. Upon ringing, he was met with a busy tone. Twice. Before the other end picked up. Midoriya, we're in need of your assistance. Ida spoke immediately. A few nods from the class rep as he listened to the other line suddenly turned into slight dismay. Oh, you're out visiting family? No, no, that is fine. We'll make do. Thank you, Midoriya. Ida hung up the phone and scrolled through it again, calling another number. Ah, Wuraka, I'm in need of... Oh, you're busy at the moment? Very well, carry on. Thanks. With every number Ida dialed, it seemed that everybody already had plans or they were nowhere near the school's campus. It came as a surprise to you that he even called Bakugo whom you could hear clearly from his phone speaker before he hung up. You thought for a moment about the situation, wondering if one of them was clearly the culprit lying. Who else would have pushed the both of you in here and not be on school campus? Ida gloved his phone back in his pockets, slightly frustrated with the situation at hand. I will not be tempted to break the door down for the sake of public damages but also to not insult our fellow predecessors before us. Really? You questioned. We could just replace the door. That is absurd! Ida protested with passion. We will not destroy what our ancestors would have used many generations ago to keep their belongings safe. But earlier you were fine with the repair, so what's the difference? A repair is a completely different notion than a replacement, he reasoned, fixing his glasses across the bridge of his nose. And furthermore, we'll just have to wait it out until someone comes by. You turned to the tall boy, whose head almost touched the roof of the closet, past the racks that held the coats. You wondered how comfortable he was in this space, given that your body was practically flush against the opposite wall. It was already going to be tricky to make any legroom should the need arise that either of you needed to sit. You leaned against the closet doors, peering out through the cracks in between with a lack of vision or any depth perception to determine any movement outside. You continued to rack your brain, figuring out who would have pushed the both of you in here, and knowing Ida's height, it would have been at least two people who would have done so. I vote Kaminari and Sero. You mused, catching the tall boy's attention. Excuse me? I think it was those two who pushed us in here, you continued, still eyeing through the cracks. 
I can't think of anyone else who would even consider the thought. Well, it sounds logical, but that doesn't solve our problem. Ida turned to the doors and knocked three times with no answer on the other side. You could see the inner turmoil in his face, wondering if he was actually considering on breaking the doors down. It wouldn't be too hard, well, at least for Ida. But you knew with all of his huffing about respect that it would have killed him to do so. Um, do you think that maybe someone may have left something in one of these pockets that could be useful? You suggested as you began opening up a coat and checking its pockets. Ida immediately flailed his hand in a slight panic. Wait! That's considered stealing! And a breach of privacy! He exclaimed. I'm going to call it a temporary loan if we find something useful, you reasoned as you continued searching. If you have another idea, I'm happy to go with that, but this is all I can think of. You've gone through at least two coats by now with no luck. However, Ida watched you with dismay, and yet an underlying agreement to your idea. He sighed heavily, muttering about stooping low before he began looking through coats on his side of the closet. After a fair amount of searching, the best you found was a pack of gum, a pack of used gum, some change, and a post-it note with indiscernible handwriting. Your idea was a bust, at least from your side of the closet. You watched as Ida continued to search every crevice of each coat, finding nothing useful himself until he reached the coat that you had finally reached on your end. No need to check this one, he announced. It's mine. You had already began rummaging through the pockets, and upon your inspection located a small notebook. Pulling it out from the pocket of his coat, you had a quick glance at the tiny thing. It was simple, just a normal flip notepad, and without thinking, you started to flip through its pages, attempting to discern the writing in the dark. You leaned against the door again to use what light was available from outside to read, finding that the scrolls across the page were notations on some observations around school campus. Ida, I never knew you were a journalist in the making, you teased as you continued to turn the pages. Ida, finally realizing what you were doing, scrambled towards you as best he could in such a small space. That's confidential, he exclaimed. You ducked out of his way as best you could leaning against the walls of the closet to avoid his sighs. Oh, well, Takayami sitting on desks is a given, you read, while continuing to dodge every one of Ida's attempts to grab the notepad from you. Huh, improving ways of orderly conduct? Well, we're getting there, sort of. This isn't funny, cried Ida. A lopsided smile crossed your lips as you continued to read. <laughs> Ideas for team building activities, notes on exercise regimes, ways of keeping Bakugo in line. <laughs> you snickered in response to all of these writings. Ida was a serious individual, but you never thought he would keep a journal on all of his thoughts during his waking hours, even if it was a small thing. Ida was persistent in his endeavours to take the notepad away from you while you continued to turn each page and skim through his notes. No, I... I needed to collect my thoughts and Tensei suggested I write them down. So I did, Ida explained. After a few rounds or ten around the closet, Ida leaned against the opposite wall slightly out of breath due to the embarrassment rather than endurance. You, on the other hand, while reading and laughing, tried to catch your breath as you flipped another page over. <laughs> well, to be honest, these aren't bad observations, you commented. I mean, you even make note of a few things on everyone else, like on everyone's progress, their techniques, and even... You stopped as the next few words caught your eye, falling silent as you read. Ida, meanwhile, stood with his arms crossed. However, his eyes were downcast, almost as if he were waiting on your response. You slowly turned each page, reading each word carefully. 
There were notes, but they weren't in Ida's handwriting. The nature of it changed a few times over, as if the notepad was passed around. They were snippets of dating advice. You could tell by the nature of each handwritten word which piece of advice belonged to who, but the most mature piece of advice looked to be sincere. Its written words circled a few times to accentuate its importance and weight. You figured that it may have been his brother's. You gazed up at Ida and searched his face, but in the dark he had it hidden well. So who is it? you asked, only being met by silence. I promise I won't tell anyone. And if you need help, I could always suss them out a bit for you. You don't have to, he responded, cutting you off. I don't need your help. An uncomfortable silence fell after his outburst. With all the teasing that you put him through, you figured you deserved the response and brushed it off. You continued to read his notepad in the meantime, mentally guessing who offered which advice based on how the message was addressed. Suddenly, the light that provided your source of vision was blocked when Ida towered over you. His arms propped on either side above your head as he looked down at you with embarrassment. In the glint of the light that crossed his glasses, you could see his eyes filled with a nervousness you never would have seen on the class rep's face. You clutched onto the notepad close to your chest, wondering what Ida was doing until the words from the pages echoed back in your mind. A few of them described this kind of moment, most likely Kaminari's advice, but the words that uttered from Ida spoke of another. I don't need your help because I... It's you. Ida spoke, blunt and forward. You saw his gaze look away in embarrassment and yet he still held his ground. It looked like he took his brother's advice after all remembering the circled words on the pages. Ida looked ashamed of himself in this moment, perhaps because of the nature of the situation and that it wasn't the most ideal time and place. You gazed up at him with a blush, the heat of your bodies getting to your head and mentally questioned why he had to be this close. But in a way, it was almost comforting to know that this whole time he was holding back his thoughts. You cracked a smile and in the silence quickly turned to his notepad and flipped a few pages back, reading through the notes. Thank you, you softly spoke. To be honest, I'm glad you told me. A small weight touched the top of your head as you felt Ida's forehead lean into it. His eyes were closed, but a smile was on his lips, replacing his nervous frown earlier. No, thank you. Ida sighed. I was afraid that I wouldn't get this opportunity again. <laughs> Do you ever wonder why I always turn to you when there's something wrong? Ida's eyes looked back at you confused, yet curious. He didn't expect this kind of response. Well, for one, you're our class rep, so you're on top of things. You get the job done, and, well, you're reliable. I like that, you grinned, holding onto the notepad again. You know, and it's pretty cute that you went through all this trouble just for this. <laughs> um, if anything, I'm sorry that it ended up this way. For a moment, the both of you just stood there, the silence now comfortable in between, until Ida cleared his throat. <clears throat> um, well, now, can I have my notepad back? You immediately stuck your tongue out teasingly. No. It happened so fast, but you found yourself in Ida's arms. He had tried to reach for the notepad from your hands while you retaliated by trying to hide it behind you. This only caused you to fumble and drop it on the floor before you felt your feet trip under you crashing into Ida's body before he grabbed you and fell as well, taking the weight of the fall. In a heap, Ida's body took the entire space in the closet while you nestled in his chest, feeling the heat creep up into your cheeks. Both Ida and yourself laid there for a while, unsure whether to try and move or to keep still. But eventually you felt his heart beat through his chest, 
an almost calm, rhythmic feeling against your ear. You didn't look up at Ida, but you felt a light kiss atop your head as he pulled you in close. It wasn't very smooth, if anything there was a hesitation in it, but it felt warm as you melted into him. There was a sweet calm, until Ida's phone violently vibrated through his body that even you could feel it through his chest. He quickly answered it as you looked up into his eyes now illuminated by his screen. The sound of Momo's voice echoed through his speaker as you watched Ida respond with a sigh of relief. Oh, thank God, he sighed. Thank you, Yayoruzu. We're not going anywhere. As Ida hung up his phone in the dark, he turned to you with a reassuring smile. Looks like we have ten minutes until Yayoruzu arrives. Oh good, he spoke with a smile. So, in the meantime, can we stay like this for a while? Ida laughed as you felt his deep voice reverberate through him. The time spent was made with light conversation before Ida flustered about setting a date, time and place to hang out outside of school. You allowed him to create a schedule seeing as he was pretty good at making them, while you pondered on the places and activities for the alleged day. After a while the doors clicked open, and there stood Yao Yoruzu, Toru, and Uraraka looking down at the two of you, still lying on the closet floor. You could hear the high-pitched squeal from Toru as soon as they saw you, causing the both of you to scamper off of each other. Ida cleared his throat and thanked Yayoruzu for freeing the both of you from the closet. Well, it's the least we could do, she replied. We agreed to come back after our errands today when Uraraka got the call from you. The girls questioned about the situation and learnt that the closet door was in need of a repair after this morning's inspection. They agreed to grab their belongings to start the process, along with Ida and yourself grabbing your things from there. As you took your belongings from the rack, you spotted the notepad on the floor, picking it up and turning to Ida, handing it back to him. Standing alone in the hallway after the girls had left with their coats, Ida grabbed your hand holding the notepad and gently kissed your knuckles, taking you by surprise before he slipped the notepad from you.